All right, welcome to my online math course. I am gonna be your teacher and your guide. My name is Mr. Kuchma. And in this video, you're gonna learn how to navigate uh, the online math courses. Uh, all of our online math courses are actually very similar. So once you learn how to do one, all the following ones will be very similar. So that's, that's a really great feature. Um, and then we're gonna be covering how to go through lessons, how to go through assignments, and how to go through tests. So by the end of this video, you will be worry-free um, as you start your math journey. All right, let's begin. All right, so here we are in Foundations of Math 12. So this online course is actually my favorite. Um, it's the most useful math, and you're probably taking this course because you wanna to go to a particular university program, or at least leave the option open for a university program. So that's awesome. At the very top, you can see there's a little bit of course information. It's just a little blurb. Um, there's also a formula sheet that you can print off. The formula sheet is useful for all assignments and all tests. Um, free reign. Next is my teacher contact information. So uh, here I am, Mr. Kuchma, obviously. There's my email that you can reach me at, and there's also my Skype ID. So Skype ID, the reason why that's there is because if you scroll down a little bit, there is a required Skype meeting um, with me at the beginning of the course. I want you to do that within the first two weeks of being enrolled. Um, you should get an email from me within the first week of being enrolled asking for a Skype meeting. Um, if you're very, very new to the course, my email might not have been sent out yet. Um, but that's what you should do. I want to meet you. I want to um, just talk to you, get to know you a little bit, and answer any questions that you have, and uh, just guide you on your road to success. So you won't be able to access certain things in the course until that Skype meeting is complete. Um, my Skype hours are posted up here in this teaching information. So just be aware that my Skype hours change throughout the year. Um, that is gonna be the place where they're the most up to date. And uh, basically just send me a message on Skype. Don't call me uh, because oftentimes I'm in other meetings. So um, it's better if you just message me and then I'll call you back when, uh, when I'm ready. If we scroll down a little bit farther, you will see this final project um, deadline blurb. And this is important. Um, all of our math courses are built very uh, similarly, except Foundations Math 12 has one thing different. It has a final project instead of a final exam. This is to prepare you for uh, university courses because university courses oftentimes will have a final project and not a final exam. So if you want to find out about the final project, go to the very bottom of the course. There's a course project video. Um, basically, you're going to do two things. You are going to make a report, and in the report, you'll have all of your research, your hypothesis, your question that you're trying to answer, and then you're going to do a presentation to me on Skype at the end. So there's two Skype meetings in this course that are mandatory, the one at the beginning and the one at the end. Um, the rubric for how you're going to be graded is down here as well. And once you get to the end of the course, um, you get to present that to me. So that's exciting. Um, just so that you know, the reporting periods are set here. So the reason why we have these final project deadlines is so that I can get your mark submitted so they get onto your transcript. So just keep in mind, we want you to have all of your assignments and tests done um, before, you, uh, before you get to the final project. So make sure that all of your coursework is complete. And that is the final project. If we scroll down, there's policies and procedures. This is another really important thing. You have to go through and read all of these. Um, all of our courses have very similar, in the math program that is, uh, very similar policies. Um, so give them a read through. There's different pages, so go to the next page. And as you can see, you'll go through the uh, table of contents. Um, if I go back to the course page, I want to take you to chapter one. So chapter one is finances, and our courses are split up into three parts. You're gonna have lessons, you're gonna have assignments, and then you have tests. So I'm gonna take you through and show you how to do each one of those. Um, lessons is where you learn the content, assignments is where you show us that content, and the tests are where you get graded on that content. So for chapter one, I'm actually gonna skip over lesson one because it's just a course introduction. And if you go to lesson two on simple interest, you're gonna get logged into StudyForge. That's where all of our lessons take place. And I require students to do three things within your lessons. If you do these three things, you get 100%. So it's not really graded, 
It's just marked. Did you do them? Number one is you gotta print off your notes. So yes, they're a little bit outdated, but if you use normal, um, you'll see uh, there's a lot of fill in the blanks and you're gonna be filling out the blanks as you watch the course videos. So please make sure that you fill out everything um, that's laid out in the videos. The next required thing to do is obviously watch the videos, but I require you to watch 100% of the videos. Do not skip through them. Um, that is not good. Uh, you will lose marks if you do that. Uh, once you get to the end of the video, uh, there will be the next video button and you can go to the next part um, to learn the next piece of content. The notes and the lesson videos go hand in hand and then underneath that are practice questions. So I require students to try at least five practice questions in each lesson. In chapter one, there's three lessons, so there's 15 practice questions. Um, there's only eight practice questions here. You, try, you have to try all five. Uh, if you go to lesson two, you're gonna find that there are 12 practice questions. Again, I wanna see that you're doing at least five. And I would suggest doing um, them down a, uh, not doing the first five and instead doing a column. So like one, four, seven, and 10, and then one more. Um, that way you're getting a diversity of questions. Uh, and you'll be better prepared for the assignments and tests. When you click on a practice question, um, there are two things that you can do. You can either do these online, and I'm about to show that to you, or you can do these on paper. Um, if you do these online, please show your work over on this side, and please provide your answer. So as you can see, you can either use um, your mouse to write, or you can use your keyboard, doesn't matter to me. Um, but you're either gonna get your answer right, or you're gonna get your answer wrong. Um, you can check here to see if you got it right or wrong. I don't care if you get the question right or wrong, I just care that you did them. So this is a completion. Did you do the five practice questions that were required? Um, as you go into some of the harder practice questions, um, if you get the question wrong, um, there's gonna be an orange solution button and you can click on the orange solution button to see the steps to get it right. As you can see, I've helped the student with this practice question, so it's actually saved it for me. Anything that you write in here will be saved and I'll be able to view it. So. If you decide to choose and do uh, these written out, please just write down the question on a place of piece of blank paper, um, show your work, show your answer, and we can go from there. You will need to scan in your practice questions if you do them on paper with your chapter notes. And if I go back to the course page, you'll see the chapter note hand in box is down at the bottom. You will need a printer and a scanner for this course, so you're gonna be scanning in your assignments, your notes, your tests. Uh, if you don't have a scanner, you can use your phone. There's a great app, it's called Cam Scanner, and it'll do that for you. Once the lessons have been completed, the next step is the assignment. So the assignments are a little bit more straightforward. You just print them off, you complete them, and then you scan them in. What's important about the assignment, though, is that you make sure that you indicate what you're trying to get in the course. What is your achievement goal? Please circle A+, plus you know, A, B, C. If you're just trying to pass, we're gonna mark you very differently than if you're an A plus student. Um, so that's an important thing for us to note. I do have markers that help me mark the assignments and they are pass or fail until you pass. So you'll see you're either good to go or it needs corrections. And if you need corrections, that's okay. You can resubmit your assignment with the corrections that need to be made. In that case, um, you can just resubmit it right into the same hand in box. I'll show you where the hand in box is on the course page. It's again right here, finance assignments, hand in box. Now the chapter test is the last piece of um, the chapter and it's a little bit different. There's actually a time limit on it. So the time limit is kind of to prepare you for um, exams at university and also for the final project. The final project is also gonna have a, a time limit. It should be at least between 10 minutes and 20 minutes, just so you know. But on the test, uh, there's gonna be two parts. You're gonna have uh, a multiple choice section first and then a written section after. So when you click on the uh, finance chapter test written work, it's gonna take you here and the questions aren't listed. So the questions are actually gonna be all be online. Um, and as you can see, this is question 11. So the first 10 questions are all multiple choice. For qu uh, chapter one and chapter one only on the finance test, um, question 15 is omitted. Uh, it's a question that regards uh, Microsoft Excel, and you do not need to do it. There is a little take here about that. But that is how each chapter functions. Um, it, 
it follows that same formula of lessons, assignments, and then test. So coming back to the top, if you do need any help in the course, please reach out. I don't know if you need help unless you tell me. So you can come see me during my Skype hours. You can send me an email. If my time on Skype doesn't work for you, there's also a Math TA Skype help schedule that's on the right hand side of the course page. They're free to use. All you do is you add them on Skype like you add me on Skype. Uh, you message them like you message me and then they'll get back to you and they'll call you and they'll be able to help you through an assignment question that you might be struggling with. Uh, and they have extended hours more than I do, which is a great little feature. Um, so if you're trying to get a Skype schedule, you know, our Skype meeting later on in the day, I don't have those availability, but they would. That is it for the course. So welcome, I hope you do great. Your success is my success. And I'm at the finish line waiting for you when you get here, but I'm also your guide along the way. So I hope that you have a great time on this math journey.